<coughs> okay so yesterday what we discussed so we were discussing morphological operations and we discussed basically erosion and dilation what is happening here okay so what is that component that you said we call it structuring element huh? and uh, what kind of what should the, that structuring element be like well uh, do we have any criteria for deciding a structuring element or or it can be anything depends on how much bond we want to remove so what will depend size of the stretching element will de will determine how much bond we want to remove or the shape will also determine both will affect the operation so the size and shape has to be chosen so that according to what result we want in the things and what is dilation so what we do there there is wherever there is a heat operation okay so uh, today we'll move forward and uh, see some more interesting operations that can be done by using erosion and dilation so so uh, one is called uh, these are compound operations opening and closing operations which are basically <clears throat> done by combining a set of erosion and a set of dilation operations so let us see them one by one so an op an opening operation of between two sets f and s is defined as first you do this is what this is a symbol for which operation this is a symbol for erosion operation that we were using and this is a symbol for so this is erosion and this is dilation okay so when we first do erosion and then using the same stretching element as we dilate it then that operation is called opening and why we would like to do that why would like to do this sequence hmm? so by erosion you will remove some small irrelevant details and by dilation what you will do you will bring it back to the same size so if you remember the pre this example where we ended last class we were actually doing first erosion and then dilation so by dilating we were trying to re restore it to the because we are using the same stretching element so if we erode and dilate it will basically nullify the effect for that for for whatever regions that survived during erosion uh, if you dilate it with the same stretching element it will again restore it back to the same size so <clears throat> so that is called an opening operation so an example illustration is shown here for this kind of a uh, image region if you take a if you take a power point if you take a, a this shape uh, stretching element as shown here with the center origin at the center so first if you do an erosion operation you will get this kind of an effect so what do you expect when you are doing erosion it is basically so wherever it fits that one that let that, that locations will uh, survive and all other locations will be eliminated so for example in this the thin connecting bar, uh, bar the radius of the disk is slightly larger than that thing so it is not fitting it so this entire thing will be removed so it it is basically helping to separate these two regions which are being connected by a small region so they are getting separated out and also these uh, uh again this 
that uh, because these uh, these bars or the uh, again the size of those uh, things are I think less than the stretching element uh, diameter. So those will also be reduced. So you can see wherever uh, it is not fitting. So these are the locations where it is fitting completely and within that of course all the elements will be there and similarly here some elements. And then if you again dilate it with the same stretching element, so all these will restore it back to the original size as far as possible. This because this portion was already fully eliminated, so this will not come back. Similarly, these two uh, arms of this size of the this side of the region will also not come back. Whereas the other regions will try to restore back to the original size. There is some smoothing effect you can see on the bound on the corners. That's because the stretching element is a disc shape. Stretching element, so it will have a smoothing effect also somewhere at the corners. So the resultant uh, uh, region will be something like this. So opening is mainly done to basically disconnect regions which are connected by a thin region or to eliminate irrelevant details, uh, small size regions which are lesser than the stretching element size. So this is an, ex an example. If you take if you take this stretching element and do an opening operation on this, what will be the result? What will be the output? So my this battery has finished of this, so I cannot. I'll have to show it here itself. So which are the regions which will survive? Hmm? These two big squares and this thin connected region should get eliminated. So you can verify it. So again, if you do erosion operations, if you go through this entire thing, you will be left with only these two regions. And then again, if you do a dilation operation on this, what do you expect? So you are not getting the entire region because the stretching element is not a square stretching element. If it was a square stretching element, probably you would have got back this entire square. But the stretching element was across only four adjacent, adjacent limbers. So it has only dilated in the four direction, not in the eight directions. So you are getting a this result as an example of as an result of opening operation. Is that clear to everyone? This is another example. A quick way to understand for some stretching elements, you can do it very quickly. Not for all. For example, a disc stretching element. If you want to understand what will be the output of an opening operation. You just roll it on the inner boundary. Uh, you roll that uh, stretching element inside the in, uh, in the inside of the outer boundary. So whichever uh, the farthest it can go, all those locations where it can go the farthest, that that will be the output of the opening operation. For example, it cannot this box cannot go further inside. So this. It will stop the the boundary of the resultant op uh, output will stop here. Similarly, here it will stop here. It will stop here. So, so your resultant opening uh, image will be something like this, which has been smoothed around on the corner. So you can do that way to for a quick result. A closing operation is uh, the sequence is slightly. Reverse. First, you do a dilation and then you do an erosion. So, what do you expect on the same original shape? If you first dilate it, this, uh, this small uh, gap will get filled up. This will also get further dilated, and this, uh, this big gap will also get slightly filled up. So, you are getting this kind of an image. And then, if you do an erosion operation. It will try to restore it to the original size. Only thing is, I think this gap, because it got filled up 
significantly so it has not been uh, you have ended up building up this gap without much changing the overall size of the region so it is mainly used for um, after as i said as a post processing operation when you are when there are holes inside the knob object region there are missing <laughs> pixels you would may want to do a closing operations to fill up those inside regions which which accidentally didn't uh, came out as a part of the region so as a thresholding operation or a segmentation operation some as the original example i showed in the first example when we started the discussion if there are missing pixels inside the region you may want to fill it up without changing the overall size if you just dilate it it will fill up the inside region but it will also expand the outer outer region so if you don't want to do that if you want to minimize the change in size so you do a closing operation you follow it by a erosion operation so on on this example if you do a closing uh, with this touching element what should be the result So do you expect this result? Hmm? These are separated by small distance, only one one pixel here. So these will get filled up, and whatever extra would have been done, that would be recovered by doing an erosion operation. Uh, again, for this touching element, you can you can roll it on the outer side of the boundary and uh, to the extent it can go uh, so here for example it cannot go further beyond this so the boundary of the op closing operation will be the locus of the uh, of the ball the boundary will be basically this one so you will have a resultant something like this So an example of closing, uh, of using this closing and opening operation. So this example also we showed in the beginning of our discussion. Uh, this is an example of doing a fingerprint matching. So after uh, by, after generating binary images, there are problems with this fingerprint image. There are small noise regions, and then there are small holes inside these fingerprint ridges. Also, As you can see there are dark holes inside it there are some broken so you may want to remove not only this noise regions but also you may want to fill up this host regions for matching purpose uh, so uh, to eliminate these small regions what we can do erosion but followed by dilation so that means we should do a op opening operation so you first do an erosion and then dilate it so you will, this is the result of an opening operation so what it is it is removing these uh, small irrelevant details which are noise regions but uh, without change much changing the size of the ridges uh, here if you just do erosion thus the they will become thin but there is a small problem here you can see the uh, the ridges have gone little uh, broken some some breaks have been introduced as a result of doing a, a closing opera, uh, opening operation so to remedy this you can follow it by a by a closing operation so in the closing operation you first do a dilation then these small breaks that were introduced they are getting uh, remedied and then you do an erosion so that again the the, the enlarging effect has been nullified so this result you can see a final result you have served both purpose you have eliminated these small uh, noise regions and also you have filled up this small uh, salt and pepper noise kind of thing so you can see this is kind of a salt and pepper noise which you have basically tried to eliminate it by doing this method so you can do a median filtering also to do to you could have the other way you could have tried to address this thing is by doing a median filtering 
if the density of this noise was not large you could have actually also done by meter filtering but this is another way even if the density is large morphological processing would would be it would be easier to do it by morphology so you are getting a a good a good uh, processed image output which can be now used for fingerprint matching and whatever if you use directly this image uh, no matter what algorithm you may use it will not this it will not uh, help us for a it will not help us give us a good matching result but this cleaned up image will be very useful for doing for the further stages of processing so um there are other uh, quite bunch of uh, applications of morphology so we'll discuss some more of them so these are all in your gonzalez book uh so i'll try to cover the uh, all of them as far as possible so one thing we can very easily do with morphology is extracting the boundary of a binary image of a binary region so how can we do that for example this is your uh, binary region a you can take a stretching element like a square stretching element first do an erosion on this it is going to chip away the boundary pixels from all eight directions okay so to to if you just if you are just interested in those uh, boundary pixels you just subtract this this set from the this set so this was your original set and this was your dilated set uh, eroded eroded set if you just subtract it you will you will be left with the boundary pixels which were eroded so this is a very elegant way to extract the boundary boundaries of of a binary region by doing a very simple erosion operation and a set difference operation if instead of this uh, this square stretching element if we were using a cross stretching element what what boundary you would get when you were using the only the cross stretching element and applying this boundary extraction method will there be any change in the boundary hmm which one will be missing or which one will be added like this one this one this one hmm even this one this one so for, uh, you can do it manually try to do first do an erosion operation see what will what will and uh, depending on the adjacency of four adjacency or eight so this is this is basically uh, using all eight connected neighbors and the cross one is using only four connected neighbors so the boundary uh, here you have a eight connected boundary there you will have a four connected boundary basically and not we can may not set four connected boundary but yeah so these these pixels will be missing so there will be some difference here so the choice of stretching element will make a difference so we should choose uh, accordingly so this is another example so what kind of stretching element should have been used here we have used a square Three by three stretching element, and we have extracted the boundary. Uh, you can also do connected component extract. You can also extract connected component. So the way we were we were using sequential algorithm for connected component labeling. After segmentation, generally when we have a binary image. 
different regions uh, uh, may be basically different. different uh, so let me go to the an example is here. Let us say we we may want to extract different regions which are connected to each other. So so for that purpose we do some kind of a connected component labeling. So the components which are connected to each other we give them unique labels. So in this case, for example, uh, for this kind of an image, basically uh, now depending on whether you want a four connect, you are doing four connectivity or eight connectivity. Four connectivity means you are only considering the four neighbors, and eight connectivity you are considering all eight neighbors as connected to each other. So if you are only considering four neighbors, then this will be forming one connected component, which will may all get one unique label. In this case, one. This will form another connected component because these two will not be considered connected because they are diagonal neighbors. So they will they will be given another label two, and this will be given another label, and this will be given another label. So there will be total four connected components here. Whereas if we were considering eight connectivity, we were considering all diagonals also. Then this entire thing will be one will form a part of one component, uh, and that they 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 will get just one unique label. So you can do this labeling uh, using a simple uh, uh, depth first search kind of an algorithm or depth first search BFS algorithm, just like in graph we do. We in graph also we find connected uh, graph and so on. So something similar we can do. We can scan the image basically till we find uh, a unlabeled unity valued pixel, which is basically your one valued pixel foreground pixel. So and uh, we assign it a new label. And then we basically see its neighbors. Uh, so whether so either four neighbors or eight neighbors, depending on what connectivity we are doing it. And then uh, we recursively call this function so that we la we label all its neighbor with the same label that we that was given to this uh, particular pixel. And we go on searching it uh, in a DFS or BFS manner, uh, depending on how you call this recursive function. And stop till when there is no unlabeled uh, pixel remaining, and uh, then you repeat it. Uh, continue the scanning the image and find uh, till you find another uh, new pixel which has not been labeled, and continue up applying this kind of a method. So that is one recursive way of doing it, but a more efficient way of doing it uh, using a sequential scan that we discussed. So these are uh, so these are not morphological ways to do it. These are just a simple algorithms without using morphological operation. And later on, we see the morphological way of doing this connected component labeling. So this sequential algorithm is the most popularly used algorithm, which is implemented in all the libraries, OpenCV or or even MATLAB. This incidentally is the most efficient algorithm for doing this labeling. So in this case, we do we scan the image two times. In the first pass, basically, we go on scanning in the uh, top to bottom and left to right manner, uh, row by row. You we go on scanning basically. And uh, when we examine a particular pixel, when we find a particular pixel which is unity valued pixel, we see uh, the label that has been given to its left neighbor and top neighbor. If we were doing four connectivity, if we were doing eight connectivity, we will see all these labels, uh, this label, this label, this and this, uh, because diagonal will also come into consideration. But in this example illustration, we are only illustrating four connectivity. So. Uh, if if the pixel is is a background pixel, we don't label it. If the pixel is a foreground, then we examine its left and top neighbor. If if both of them were zero, they had no label. Then this is the first component. Uh, this is the first pixel of the new component that we have begun. We have found. So we will increment the connected component label and assign that new label to the current pixel. So in this case, when we come here, initially our CC was zero. When we come here, left was uh, had no label. Top there was no pixel. So we increment the CC to one, and basically assign this uh, component, this pixel, the label one. Then we move forward, and now in, in, for this pixel, basically we find that uh, there is a one label pixel which has been given label one. So we'll just copy that label to this, and uh, so on. So if we if we go this way, this will be again given a new label because at this end there was no label. So a new component will be given, and so on. Similarly, this will be given three, and all others will be copied. Now, when we come down, when we come at this point, again, uh, top, uh, top and left, there was one label was already given, so we will give the same label to it. 
when we come at this point now both of them have labels but in this case both uh, both both l and t are one and they have the same label in that case there is no ambiguity we'll just copy that that unique label to it and similarly we will go on continuing to this but when we come at this point let us say this pixel there is a problem uh, because now the top label has top pixel has label 2 and the left pixel has label 1 so what should we do in that case when there is a different label what we do generally we assign the lowest number label to the p so in this case we have assigned this label uh, this pixel the same label 1 which was the lower lower number label and mark that 1 and 2 are equivalent because now we know that 1 and 2 are connected through this pixel so they both should be getting the same label so we'll mark these two labels as equivalent labels so we'll store this equivalence in some kind of a table and in this way we when we come here we understand that 1 and 3 also are equivalent so when we do that uh, after the first pass is completed we have to uh, again scan the image once more and replace all the equivalent labels by their equivalence label so 2 will get replaced by 1 and 3 will get replaced by 1. So this is a uh, way we can label all the connected components. But there is one thing that we have to do. We have to sometimes resolve equivalences because equivalences may not be so straightforward. An example is here uh, where equivalences can be more complicated. In this case, for example, uh, 5 is equivalent to 6 and 5 is equivalent to 2. So there is one equivalence 5 is equivalent to 6 and 2 is equivalent to 5. So now we know that 2 is equivalent to 5 and and 5 is equivalent to 6 so this implies 2 should also be equivalent to 6 so there are in in effect 2 5 and 6 are all equivalent labels so in the second scan we have to replace all of them by a unique label normally we choose the lowest label so we should replace all of them by 2 similarly in this case 3 is equivalent to 7 and 7 is equivalent to 10 so this implies we have to infer that uh, 3 is also equivalent to uh, 10. So in effect, all 3, 7 and 10 will get replaced by one label. To do this, basically, we'll have to do some kind of a transitive closure operation. So we know that if, if there is a relationship between 2 and 5 and 5 and 6, so if you do a transitive closure, we know that there is uh, 2 and 6 are also related with the same relationship or if you think in terms of the path problem in algorithm in graph we see if 2 is connected to 5 and 5 is connected to 6 that means 2 is also connected to 6 so if you recollect your algorithms uh, the floyd wash algorithm which does a transitive closure basically if you apply that we can generate these equivalences and or other way we can use a union find uh, disjoint data structure and uh, you can use the union find function uh, methods on disjoint data structures to do this so if two so initially we represent all of them as disjoint sets all these labels and as and when we find that they are equivalent we do a union operation and when in the second pass we have to label them by a unique label we do a find operation so all the disjoint sets before that they get connected into one uh, unique set and when we do a find operation we the find operation returns the, just one unique label and in that way we do that so these two things we did not discuss in detail because you would have studied them some point in data structure algorithm course but uh, uh, we have to do that and then we have to do the second pass so that was the thing morphology to do the same thing but this will not be so efficient than that one but this is just an illustration of uh, you can uh, use morphology also to do the same job so how you can do morphology for extracting connected component so you start with any pixel which is a part of the region take this uh, stretching take uh, this square stretching element do a dilation operation with this so this is your dilation operation so when you do a dilation operation, these pixels will be added. Maybe more pixels. This will pixels will also be added. But you, but every time you dilate, you take an intersection with the original set. So when you take the intersection with the original set, then you ensure that you are not going out of the region. So so the result will be these pixels. 
So in the first iteration, that means first iteration means taking this touching element, dilating it with this initial starting point, and then inter taking an intersection with this origin set, you will be get these shaded uh, pixels. Then you do another set of iteration. That means that again dilated with the stretching element B and take intersection, then you will get these further more pixels added. And you keep on doing this till there is no further change. So you keep on uh, doing so XK, XK is K minus one means K minus one is the previous iteration result. Take the previous iteration result, do a dilation, take intersection, you get the new, new, new result. And then till SK and SK minus one is same, until they are same you keep on doing that so by that you will you will have you will extract one connected component if there are more than one connected component then you have to repeat it that many times so it's, it's not efficient way to do it though that one was more efficient but this is one way you can also use morphology to to extract connected components so an application here Many times we go for our CBC test done, complete blood count, blood cell count done. So how do you how do they do that? So they take our blood sample and then what they do? They look in the microscope and do manually count how many <laughs> blood cells are there. At some point, that would may probably that would was being done, but now what? Uh, so how do they measure the density? No, I think they they use an automated counter where they would be basically. They will be using some kind of an imaging technique. So this is an example of a kind of a image that you may get for uh, I think red blood cells image. After thresholding, after thresholding and doing, you may get this kind of a bind region. So now you can basically run a connected component labeling to count the number of. So each blood cell, until unless they are connected, they will form. There will be one connected component. But that won't happen because blood cells are very close together. The density is quite large, so they may most of the time they will be connected to each other, as you can see here. And then there will be noise regions also like this, small small noise regions. So there are many salt and pepper noise. Many of them are touching each other, so that will be a problematic for you. So how if you have to go for a, a blood cell count, what should you do? Hmm. So first you would like to, so you have to address this, you, if they are touching it, you have to try to uh, make them separate. And if there are, if there are uh, this irrelevant small noises, you have to also remove them. So what should be done first as a pre-processing? Only erosion, which is the ideal operation. Opening will do what? Hmm? And but opening will serve what purpose? Eh? Opening will remove small noise. Okay. So it will remove small noise, irrelevant details, and will it disconnect this? Eh? To some extent, it will. It will disconnect. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so if you have to do only count, probably just erosion may work. But let us say, for example, here, this is a result of doing a connected component labeling without any pre-processing. So if you run a if you run a simple CCL algorithms on this. I think it has detected 63 objects, distinct objects. 
And if you count the number of pixels with those unique labels, one, two, three, four, and that will give you the area of those regions. So the area of those 63 objects is being listed here. And once you have the connected component, you can get the bonding box and the centroid uh, locations also. So this, this statistics is obtained if you run a CCL algorithm and compute some simple features like area, bonding box, and centroid. Are you understanding what is area, what is, area, what is centroid, what is bonding box? Hmm? So once you have that region, so once you do a connected component labeling, then to calculate these features is very easy. You can uh, very easily to calculate that. And this is the result of doing that, but this was without any pre-processing. So what do you expect? What are you seeing here? For example, and a region with an area one is what? Is just a irrelevant noise. And uh, it is expected that a single cell will have an area of roughly around 50. So this region, for example, which has an area of 1048 means what? Many, many of these cells, they have got connected to each other. So you are getting a compound region with may, maybe 20 cells or around together there. Similarly, this one also has many cells together. This one may be an irrelevant detail and so on. This one is close to one single cell. Similarly, this one is close to one single cell. This one is close to one single cell and so on. So to get a better statistic, you could, you should have first done a, sorry, you could have first done a opening operation. And then if you have got the stats, I don't have a result of that, but if you have got our stats, this would look more appropriate values still you cannot eliminate all the possibilities but you will get a more close approximate uh, measurements of the scene <clears throat> another thing we can do uh, with morphology is something called region filling so if we have small holes or regions inside not just some mixing missing pixels but some dist uh, some significant size holes so how can we fill this up? Hmm? But that uh, the problem here, the hole can be of any size. So if you have a circle here, let us say, and the hole is very big. How can you ensure that this hole is entirely filled up? Hmm? But then what, what side effect it can have if you do repeat it? If they are the, the close of the objects which are adjacent, they will get much. If you don't want to do that, if you just want to fill up the whole, the regions inside this, what should you do? Why we would, why we would like to do region filling? In that case, the mixed pixels were very, the missing pixels were very quite less, and they have, so that can be, so that is one reason why I would like to uh, fill the holes inside this, and that could be done easily by doing a closing operation. But another important reason why region filling is is important because many later stages of processing where we would like to match the size and shape of the objects if you don't fill up the region that will be a problem an example is shown here for example for this image we are having this internal uh, regions missing we'll talk about skeleton there is something called skeleton generating skeleton from a binary region which is basically a compact representation of the structure and the shape of a given region. So if you don't fill up this region, you get a very weird skeleton output, which is very difficult to make a sense of. But if you fill up those regions and then apply the skeleton algorithm, then you get a much more sensible uh, skeleton result, which can be used for matching. So this is one example why region filling maybe is a use, is, can be an important step 
for later stages so <clears throat> we'll see later on about skeleton how skeleton uh, what is skeleton and what is how do you get that but just i am telling you why region filling may be a important pre processing step to be done so now the question is same if there are small regions like this probably this can be filled up by simply a closing operation this region may also get filled up by simply but if the hole is quite big then how do you ensure that you fill up the entire region any idea hmm closing operation but that has the problem i said um, if you repeatedly close the operation then closed uh, the objects which are close together they may get merged so uh one method which is not based on morphology but just simple intuition based which is called area fill operation in this operation basically what you do for example here you want to fill up the these internal regions so you extract connected components of dark regions so first is treat the dark regions as your objects of interest you extract connected components on them okay so now this background region is going to most probably be a more larger area whereas this internal regions holes this connected components on in the internal region they will have a smaller area so you can put a threshold to decide whether uh, the dark region is an inside or is that it is an outside region so those dark regions which are inside such, uh, which are less than a threshold you treat them as inside one and you just flip their values then you don't have to do any further things you just make them one so these two results i think a is a uh, it can b is the holes with area Holes with having area less than hundred are filled. So if you put a threshold at hundred and re revert them, then you get this result. If you increase the threshold to five hundred, then you fill up further things. And this is the a holes filled by morphological close operation. So here, in fact, closing operation is still doing a better job. But as you see, closing operation is. Uh, is connecting this outer skull region with the inner brain region which is not happening here so that may be a problem with closing operation but the better way if you want to do a, a region filling operation which is called flood flood fill operation i'll take an example and then come back to the previous slide so let us say this is an image region and you want to fill up this internal inside the uh, whole region which is a significant whole region so it's just a boundary as you can see there you have just the boundary and you want to basically completely fill all the regions inside that boundary so let us denote this set as a complement of this as a complement and i am taking this structuring element this cross okay so this this algorithm requires a starting in uh, an initialization you have to initialize this algorithm by picking one point inside the region so if you can pick any one point inside the region let us say this pixel p first then what you do first you dilate with this structuring element and take intersection with a complement so if you dilate with this structuring element you will get all these uh four regions but if you take intersection with a complement you will be only left with this so why why we are taking intersection with a complement so as to restrict that our 
filling doesn't go outside the boundary. So, uh, so we don't want to go outside the boundary. So here the boundary values are zeros. So why, by taking intersection, we are ensuring that we are never reaching the boundary. We are only restrict, we are rest, we are only growing inside the boundary. So by taking intersection with a complement, we get this pixels and then again repeat the same step. Do a dilation and then take intersection. We get this and we continue. So these are the diff result at different iteration, first iteration, second iterations, after six iteration, and after seventh iteration. And after that, you get no more changes. So then you stop. So these are all the regions which are internal regions. And then you take union with the original set A, you get the entire field region. It's not an efficient method, but it's a method where you, which by you will fill up every every pixel inside the region, which is a whole region. Then you have to initialize it for separately. Now, if, if you initialize it, if you have, if you know the starting pixels in each location, you can run this, uh, this algorithm in one go. So for, it will keep on filling every region simultaneously. But the problem is how do you, so this is an example where if you only choose one, one region is filled, but if you start, if you initialize all the starting locations, then all regions will get filled up. But there won't be any any side effect of merging. This here they were already connected, so I think this thing. But if they won't further, there won't be a side effect of merging those things. But the big big pro, big disadvantage here is you need a you need a manual initialization. 